How many people who were appointed to lead us have we judged as not fit to be leaders in our parish, in our renewal community? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. There is an old, old story about a pilgrim standing outside heaven, longing to enter in, watching as others were welcomed through the gates of pearl onto the streets of gold. As he stood there, he saw a group clothed in white robes and waving banners approaching the gates. He turned to the gatekeeper and asked, Who are they? The gatekeeper answered, Those are the prophets who prepared the way for the Christ, who told of his coming and of the great joy that would be experienced at his birth. The man said, Well, I'm not a prophet, so I cannot enter with them. Soon he saw another procession coming. It was a smaller group, but a glorious one nevertheless. They too were clothed in white robes. Again he asked, Who are they? Why, they're the apostles who walked with Jesus, Peter and James, John and Andrew, and Bartholomew and all the others. They're the ones who preached the gospel and established the church. The man said, Well, I'm not an apostle, so I cannot enter with them either. But as he continued to watch, there came yet another procession much larger than the first two. They too were clothed in white and carrying banners of victory. Once again he asked, Who are they? Why, said the gatekeeper, those are the missionaries and ministers who went into all the world with the gospel, inviting the lost and dying to come to Jesus. The man bowed his head and said, I'm not one of them either. But then he heard the sound of many footsteps in the distance. And when he looked up, he saw a vast throng of people, more than any could possibly number, and what a motley mixture they appeared to be. He didn't understand exactly how he knew, but these were obviously the rejects of the earth, the refuse of mankind, publicans and sinners and harlots. He thought to himself, surely the gates of heaven will not open for them. But to his amazement, the gates swung wide open, and he heard the heavenly choir singing songs of joyous welcome. Dumbfounded, he asked, Who are they? The gatekeeper responded, These are those who have sinned greatly, but who have been forgiven and saved through the grace of Almighty God. The man leaped for joy and said, I'm one of them and I can enter with them. And he to walk through the gates of pearl and receive the welcome of the heavenly choir. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus dines with Matthew or Levi as Mark and Luke name him in their Gospels. Among the Jews, Tax collectors were one of the most hated groups of people. They were seen as collaborators to the pagan colonial rulers, the Romans, and traitors to their fellow Jews. They often collected more than the required taxes to fill their own pockets. Clearly, they were extorting money from the people and were grossly corrupt. And Jesus invites one of them to become his follower. Jesus must have seen something in Matthew which was not evident to everyone, especially the Pharisees who criticized Jesus for dining with tax collectors and other sinners. He was supposed to be a man of God and a teacher. The Pharisees were sticklers for laws and rules, and anyone who disobeys such is criticized, ostracized, penalized, and punished. Jesus overhears them and says, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus did not need to spend time with the transformed. He spent time with those who needed healing of the heart. How many people who were appointed to lead us have we judged as not fit to be leaders in our parish, in our renewal community? Perhaps they did not speak or pray as we would have expected to, or they may be soft-spoken, weak may be the term, and indecisive, prone to take long in making decisions, oftentimes seemingly passive. Or they may have done some wrongdoing in the past, was a rehabilitated drug addict, was imprisoned, for instance. Or they may continue to have some vices, such as smoking and drinking. How could God pick them or allow them to become Christian leaders? If you look at the twelve apostles, they who picked up from where Jesus left and spread the good news to the world, dying for the cause even, and transforming generations, they were a bunch of ordinary men who were full of faults, fragile in faith and prone to sin. Jesus asks us today to be merciful. No amount of sacrifice and good works on our part will be enough to gain entry into His kingdom. He only requires that we obey His two greatest commandments, to love Him and to love those around us without prejudice, bias, and discrimination, to see the good in them, to see Jesus in them. 
Explore every avenue to know the good in people. Recognize their worth to your own growth in holiness. They may just be what the Lord wants for you to cure your own spiritual ailment, your gauge if you have grown in the fruit of the Spirit, a blessing in disguise to you, wrapped in a unique present for your own future of hope. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, help me to see the extraordinary in the ordinary and to see you in people so that I may love them unconditionally and not judge them harshly. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.